and welcome to Swiss Info. I'm Susan Masika, and I'm at the Paul Clay Center in Bern. And this is the site of the first international public media conference. And my guest here is Noel Curran. He is the general director of the EBU, the European Broadcasting Union. Maybe you could tell us a bit about, in a nutshell, what yeah, that is? Yeah, the European Broadcasting Union, we represent public service media organizations all around Europe. We represent uh, 117 separate organizations in over 50 countries and we provide content, we exchange content, we buy sports rights, we um, make the case for public service media around Europe and we have some North African members as well. Mm -hmm. Very good. And what do you think about this style of broadcasting with a smartphone on Facebook Live? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm used to this. I'm a former reporter or so, and I was editor of uh, Current Affairs in uh, the uh, Irish National Broadcaster. So it's, uh, you know, you're not double jobbing, you're usually treble jobbing these <laughs> yeah. days. When I remember when I started as a reporter, you, you'd go out to do an interview and you'd have, you'd have like four people. And I'd come in from print journalism and I could never get my head around it. So uh, things, are, things are changing. They are changing. <clears throat> and also for public media, the topic of this conference, what are some of the biggest challenges facing public media, would you say? I think there's lots of different, the same challenges that are facing the rest of media. Uh, we have a lot of organizations, uh, tech, tech companies particularly, that have become huge very quickly, are dominating reach, dominating revenues, and that's a big, significant change that has happened. We have funding issues, partly because of that, partly because of uh, government policy. Uh, we have, our audiences are just more fickle. They, they are used to choice and they want choice and uh, they loyalty, brand loyalty or public service media loyalty or whatever uh, the, the organization or company is, is counts for less. And I think that's a big challenge. And then we've got all of the things that are happening in society. You know, society is full of dissonance at the moment. Um, well, coming out of austerity, we've got a rise of different political movements, a lot of people feel disconnected. Uh, so all of those things, you know, and some of them are specific to us around the funding and political interference, uh, and others are general for the media as a whole. And there was a lot of talk today about sharing content, about how both public and mm. private media can collaborate and share content. Mm. Does it really make sense to be drawing this firm line between public and private? For me, I think it does because I think public service media needs public funding and therefore we need to be doing things that commercial media isn't. And that's what I say to everybody. We need to be doing things that commercial media doesn't do. Like what? Uh, well, in terms of the amount of, of uh, monies we invest in regional programs, the amount of money we invest in minority programs. Uh, we invest heavily in programs that are not profitable and output that is not profitable. Uh, so a whole range of different things like that. So, you know, and I, I think there needs to be a distinction so that we justify the public funding. And uh, I think an awful lot of what the commercial sector does is really good, really strong. It's not a question of one being better than the other. Um, and as I said, I worked in the commercial sector, so I know what they deliver, but it's more a question of we have a different set of responsibilities, a different set of different type of funding, and I, I believe they should be separate. And, and, and we should earn it, you know, I've, I've no issue with that, we should earn it. Earn the, earn the trust. Earn, earn the public funding, earn the trust, provide, show that we are transparent, show where we're spending that public monies, all of those things I think are really important. And at today's conference, you revealed some interesting figures about films, some films that are done very well and with help from, from public media. Public media, we invest 18 billion a year in content uh, across Europe. We invest really, I don't think people realize, we invest really heavily in uh, domestic content, in European content and in European film. And we went back through 
it was actually something I heard someone say at a conference and I asked our people to check it out. Is it true that uh, over the last nine, to nine, ten years, every winner of the Palme d'Or has been partly funded by public service media? Wow. And, and that's just one of the things. I think there's lots of other awards and documentaries and lots of other fiction awards, children's programming particularly, we feature very, very heavily. And for me, that is something really important, is that investment in content and that investment in European culture and society. It's remarkable. Indeed. Yeah. 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 It's something we're probably not making enough of. You yeah, know, maybe not. <laughs> you know, something we need to talk about a bit more, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. And have you got any predictions, say, for the next 10, 15 years? I think the consolidation in our industry is going to, you know, just grow. There's, going to be smaller. Uh, I think it's happening in the newspaper industry, it's happening in the broadcasting industry. I think public service media will still be around if we change, you know, if we realise the scale of the challenge that we're facing and if we convince politicians, regulators and most importantly the public that we are still relevant, that it's not us over there, we're not part of some elite that doesn't know what's going on. Um, and I think if we can do that, if we can bring the public with us and others with us, then we will be around. Okay, that's just the bell, trying to summon people to go back into the auditorium. Um, but or I've tell got me one... to shut up. <laughs> to summon people or tell them to shut up. <laughs> no, but I've got one more question, actually. Something else that you said that's quite uh. interesting about regulators and how it could happen that they could condemn public media to extinction. Mm. I think there is a lot of pressure on regulators, in fairness, to restrict us in the digital space. And, you know, some of our competitors and others will say, oh yes, they do a fantastic job in linear television and radio, that's great, but the digital space, so what are they doing there? And I think if regulators react to that and restrict us in the digital space, we have no future, because that is where the future is. And this idea of, yes, let's leave them to do that and let's let others do this, I think is a really dangerous idea. And also, I think we need flexibility in that digital space. We are reacting against some of the biggest and best companies in the world. We need to be able to respond. We need to live up to our responsibilities with regulators. But if it gets, if that regulation be comes oppressive in a sense of restricting us in what we can do and the speed at which we can do it, then I think we're in serious trouble. So the future is digital. Uh, you Absolutely. heard it here from Noel Curran. Uh, you never heard it before, but you heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> Especially on Swiss Info, as we are based online, but yeah, multimedia platform. Thank you so much for joining Thank you. us. And stay with us because starting at 10 past 2, the conference will continue. And if you follow the link at the bottom of this post, you can follow the live stream. Thanks very much.